Happy weekend from Fextra Life. If you've been too busy to keep up on the latest in the games we cover, or are looking for a refresher, we've got your back. Let's take a look at the comings and goings across the Fextra Life Wiki Night. Square Enix has released update 113 for Final Fantasy XV that adds some new features to the game, including the now tongue-in-cheek Magitek exosuits. The update had been delayed past its original release date due to the similarity between the Magitek suits and the Power Rangers. Yes, indeed. The new suits have been revised and no longer feature colors. Instead, they now sport a much more military-like scheme. The suit will make you invincible for 30 minutes and improve your ability to fish. Once used, you can't equip the suit again for a full 24 in-game hours. Also added were some new hunter quests, a co-op brush link system that lets you team up and do some heavy damage on foes, and the usual litany of pesky bug fixes. Reactivated in this update is also the Moogle Chocobo Carnival, the whimsical event that made its way to the game earlier this year. The global close test of the upcoming multiplayer DLC for Final Fantasy XV titled Comrades was also available this week for players. The closed beta allowed you to create a character of your own and join up with three people for some online multiplayer. The beta had a limited amount of content compared to the full release. There is no release date yet for the full expansion, but we can expect it likely in the fall, ahead of the final episodic DLC Episode Ignis, which is coming in December. The next DLC pack for the Elder Scrolls Online, titled Horns of the Reach, will be available this August 14th for the PC and August 29th for the PS4 and Xbox One. The new DLC will cost 1500 crowns in the crown store. Horns of the Reach will contain the following, two new dungeons, Bloodroot Forge and Falkreath Hold, a base game update with quality of life improvements, and will also include a new Battlegrounds map and game mode. For a full overview of everything coming in the expansion, check out our Horns of the Reach overview guide, and it will provide a breakdown of the dungeons, a new Battlegrounds map, and more. You can check out our explanation of the major changes coming to the game with Update 15 in our recent changes guide on our YouTube channel. Thoughts on a new expansion? It's live right now on the PTS on PC if you just can't help yourself. Otherwise, it's right around the corner for PC and console players. CD Projekt Red and Dark Horse Comics have announced a partnership to release a Witcher adult coloring book on November 1st, 2017. The book will run you $14.99, and pre-orders are now available at a discounted $10.49 USD. When they say adult, one wonders what the pages will contain. We do know that a bathtub Geralt is definitely included. The book will consist of 96 pages to color and will feature art from various artists. With The Witcher becoming a mega franchise, it's getting a Netflix show after all, it's joining other titles like Mass Effect and Dragon Age in the coloring world. Ninja Theory announced Hellblade Senua's Psychosis, a 25-minute feature included in their upcoming game Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, about their collaboration with neuroscientists and people with lived experience of psychosis. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is coming to the PS4 and PC on August 8th. The teaser is a welcome addition for those who are interested in the authenticity behind the game's development as it pertains to psychosis and neurological disorders, which are topics very rarely touched on in gaming. What are your thoughts on the reveal? Planning to pick up Hellblade when it releases next week? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Larian Studios has posted a new development update for Divinity Original Sin 2 that shares some of the new additions they've made to the game. Divinity 2 is presently in early access and will release September 14th for the PC. Divinity Original Sin 2 will have controller support for PC on release. Furthermore, the game will support split-screen play with the controller support. In addition, you can use controllers and split-screen to play a four-player game on two connected PCs, four-person co-op. Another new feature unveiled is skill crafting. By combining any elemental book with a non-elemental book, you'll create a new skill. In addition to skill crafting, Larian is also introducing rune crafting. Players can find or craft runes to improve weapons and gear. By combining various items and materials, you create a rune. You can then enchant items with available rune slots to give the piece of gear additional effects. The game will now feature ragdoll physics and better death animations that are relevant to the deaths suffered. For example, if a character dies on a hill, the ragdoll effects will send them tumbling down. Another indie studio and developer Dark Star Game Studios have officially announced their Dark Souls inspired boss rush action RPG Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC to release in quarter 1, 2018. Adam, a fallen soldier on a quest to save his soul will face eight abhorrent bosses, the first seven each based on one of the deadly sins. Before each clash, Adam must make a sacrifice to enter combat and choose a stat to level down. The bosses of very Dark Souls meet Shadow of the Colossus and seem to present similar challenges. They have also released the first official screenshots. 
the screens give a better look at the game's design aesthetics, and you can see that although the gameplay is heavily Souls influenced, the visuals are much less realism and have a fantastical, cell shaded quality. This is one definitely to keep an eye on. Atlas has announced that a Persona 5 anime is coming. Titled Persona 5 The Animation, the anime will be produced by Atlas in conjunction with Studio A1 Pictures. Persona 5 The Animation will release in Japan by 2018, and the word is still out whether it will be localized or dubbed for the West, but the smart money's on ya. Persona 5 came to the West earlier this year for the PS4 and P3 to intense critical acclaim. Later this week, Atlas also announced that the Persona series is getting three new spin-off games. The games are Persona 3 Dancing Moon Knight, Persona 5 Dancing Night Star, and Persona Q2. The rhythm games are both headed to the PS4 and PS Vita, and Persona Q2 is coming to the 3DS. All three are coming in 2018. Persona Q2 is a follow-up to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth, and is a crossover dungeon-crawling JRPG that will likely feature characters from past games. The franchise is no stranger to spin-offs, having received several over the years across all types of genres like 2D fighters and rhythm games, all rooted in the stories of the beloved JRPG series. We'll be sure to keep an eye on all of these. NCSoft and developer ArenaNet have revealed the second expansion for Guild Wars 2 called Path of Fire, and it will release on September 22nd for the acclaimed MMORPG. The expansion will be a standalone experience, so you don't need to own the prior expansion Heart of Thorns to play it, and it will get a free preview event next weekend. The Path of Fire expansion contains the following. Nine new specializations, one for each profession, five new open zones, the largest ever made, mounts, which are a brand new feature that will let you traverse in new zones, ride in combat, solve puzzles, and jump. The expansion is cheaper than Heart of Thorns, costing 30 bucks with additional and more expensive tiers for bonus stuff. You don't have to purchase the game to play in the trial, you only have to register for a free account and download the client. There are three different buy-in options beginning at $29.99 and going all the way up to $70.99 for an ultimate edition that features several bonuses. Thoughts on a new expansion? Be sure to let us know what you think in the comments. Bethesda has released a sizable chunk of gameplay for Wolfenstein 2 that shows the opening 20 minutes of the game as well as 30 minutes of a later chapter. This comes on the heels of last week's fresh new Milkshake gameplay trailer. The first video is a developer walkthrough of the first mission. The next video walkthrough occurs later in the game and takes main character BJ to Roswell, New Mexico, which is now under Nazi control. This all culminates with the final video, an epic boss battle in Roswell with a Zitadel. Hope you like guns! Wolfenstein is scheduled to release for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC on October 27th. Studio Wildcard announced that Ark Survival Evolved will be delayed past its initial August 8th release date and will now release August 29th for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. The game has been in early access since 2015, and its long-awaited full release was just around the corner. Fans will said it have to wait just a little bit longer to get their hands on the full content. The Ragnarok map DLC and upcoming PC update will now be delayed to coincide with the new release date of August 29th, which will give Studio Wildcard an opportunity to now expand the new content, increasing the size of the overworld by about a quarter at launch. Thoughts on the release date delay for Ark Survival Evolved? Be sure to let us know what you think. We reviewed Sundered, the new Metroidvania from Thunder Lotus Games this week. Check out our full video on our YouTube channel for the breakdown. Sundered is an overall excellent entry into the Metroidvania genre and should be a strong consideration for fans of this style. Memorable bosses and a narrative embedded in the deepest corners of the game create a very satisfying experience. 2K Games and Fire Axis have given us another look at XCOM 2's upcoming DLC War of the Chosen with a video look at one of the new enemy units you'll be dealing with, called the Lost. The Lost roam abandoned cities and hordes. If confronted, they'll start swarming whoever gets in their way. The Lost are drawn to loud noises, so as you're fighting off enemy forces, you're potentially calling attention to your units. They swarm in continuing waves, eventually overwhelming you. And as you're fighting enemy forces, they can show up any time on a map. There's a chance to fight back for a bit. By successfully taking them down with headshots, you score a free action. Ready for some zombie action? Their arrival in the middle of missions should provide a nice bit of random thrill to manage. XCOM 2 War of the Chosen releases August 29th for the PS4, PC, and Xbox One. Ambitious Space MMO Star Citizen's highly anticipated Update 3.0 that will let early access alpha players finally land on Worlds has been delayed until September. The update was to land in August after being delayed from its original June target launch. The cause for the delay is due to stability issues that have come up with the massive content additions for the update as well as work on the game's new patcher system. 
The new target date for Update 3.0 is now between September 4th and 8th. The game is also supposed to be entering in a beta period at some point this year, but there's no date set for it just yet. Thoughts on the update's delay? Have you been waiting like many others for the planet exploration update before taking a plunge? Sound off in the comments. Funcom announced that on August 16th Conan Exiles will go live on Xbox One and also release its first expansion update for the game for both PC and Xbox One players. Previously teased at E3 this year, the expansion was called the Frozen North. The Frozen North will be completely free to all players on PC and Xbox One, and it adds a whole new landmass and makes the world of Conan Exiles 70% bigger. The Frozen North also introduces new gameplay mechanics such as fish traps, beekeeping, and cooking, brewing, a new crafting system which will allow players to make alcohol which will also keep them warm in the cold. Players will also get to dedicate themselves to a new religion, giving them the ability to summon the Avatar of Imer, the Lord of Storm and War. Also coming are improvements to combat, AI, and more. Conan Exiles will leave early access and release in full on PC, Xbox One, and PS4 in quarter 1 2018. Quirky and popular farm sim RPG Stardew Valley from Chucklefish is getting its multiplayer mode in early 2018, and the developers finally shed light on what to expect. Shortly after you begin the game, Robin will offer to build up the three cabins on your farm. Each cabin will host a farmhand, controlled by one of your friends. Farmhands basically do everything the main player can. Farm, mine, fight, fish, forage, marry NPCs, and take part in festivals. Each one of the players has their own inventory, and when a farmhand is not connected, their inventory can be managed through a chest in their cabin. Player-to-player -player marriage is also being planned, and that will require effort to successfully woo, but they don't have the full details on the system just yet. They plan to run a beta test at the end of the year for Steam users. The final 1.3 patch will then come in early 2018 on PC. Consoles will also get the patch, beginning with the Nintendo Switch. A typically unique update for a very unique game that has captivated many. Blizzard has announced that the Overwatch seasonal event Summer Games 2017 will get underway next week, and it will go from August 8th and run until August 28th on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This year's event will include new skins and updates to the Lucio Ball game mode, and will also give players an opportunity to earn some skins from last year's event. Mark your calendars and get ready to get your game on. We reviewed Isometric Souls Like Immortal Planet this week. Read our full review on the blog for a breakdown of the game. For every Souls feature it misses the mark on, it makes up for it with an innovative twist on the formula, with market improvements in some ways. Mortal Planet manages to capture the strategic adrenaline rush of the Souls-like, while forging its own identity along the way. We also reviewed Dark and Light's Early Access Edition this week to see if it's worth checking out in its present state. Overall, we found that Dark and Light has a ton of gameplay possibilities, but right now in its Early Access state it's incredibly raw and unpolished. The bugs and crashes are incredibly problematic and sometimes make the game unplayable, which is unfortunate because it has a solid core of magical survival gameplay. If you're interested in survival games, or you like RPG games in general, keep an eye on this game and think about picking up a copy when it's achieved some more stability. Be sure to check out our review on our YouTube channel for a full rundown. Fail Better Games has announced that Sunless Skies, their highly successful crowdfunded literary RPG, is coming to early access for PC via Steam and GOG on August 30th for $24.99. Initially, players will be able to explore the Reach, one of the four regions of the High Wilderness, with other regions being added in throughout development. Mechanically, players can expect a broad skeleton of gameplay features to be available. You'll be able to explore the skies, dock at ports, interact with stories, trade, fight, and die. Ten years have passed since the first game Sunless Sea, and Queen Victoria has led an exodus from London to space. As the captain of a spacefaring locomotive, you'll behold wonders and battle abominations in the furthest heavens. Sunless Skies looks to continue the unique literary RPG gameplay of the first, and it raised an impressive amount of funds through its Kickstarter, making it an eagerly anticipated follow-up. It's scheduled to release for PC sometime in 2018. Koi Tecmo has announced that Omega Force's open-world action game Dynasty Warriors 9 is now coming to the West for PS4, Xbox One, and PC which should be some good news for fans of the franchise on all platforms. The game takes the series to an open world format for the first time and players can tackle the main mission or just follow their wanderlust and roam China. Folks who have loved some of Koi Tecmo's other titles like Neo and Berserk but haven't experienced Dynasty Warriors may find a lot in common. Koi Tecmo has not given a release date for the full game, but we'll be sure to keep our eye out on this one. We went hands-on with the demo of Demoniaca, 
a new Metroidvania meets 2D fighter and put together a hands-on impressions piece on the blog. Give it a read for an in-depth take. So, final verdict, is this a game worth keeping an eye on? If you're a fan of Metroidvanias without question, while the opening scene had some intense body horror to it, it never really came up again, though the enemy designs were on the creepy side. While the demo has a lot of flaws, there is far more potential here. All we can now do is cross our fingers and hope the devs can pull it all off. And that's a wrap for the Weekend Wikis. We're looking forward to another great week of gaming fun. Don't forget to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits, and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks for a great week, and as always, keep checking in with us for news, reviews, YouTube streams and videos, and general wiki goodness. Follow us on social media for all the latest and greatest. The more followers we get, the larger the army of the Fexus grows. Yeah.